Hi, welcome back to part two of Movies of My Life, whatever you want to call this series. I've probably thought of a title to give it and overrun it myself. This is part two and I'm going to do from 1989 to 1998 of the favourite movies that, are, that I've seen from each year that have been alive. And no better place to start than 1989 and we'll do a cheat because Society came out that year. Society's great. Great fun. Body horror movie. Love it. It's really, really good. The original Batman, Tim Burton's Batman. That's not the original Batman, what am I talking about? But the original Tim Burton Batman with Michael Keaton, the best Batman, is in it. Came out that year and Glory came out that year as well. And Glory, for many years, was one of, was my favourite film that I had ever seen. It was that hybrid of taking some a period of history I didn't know much about when I watched it and dramatising it and then making me feel it. And famously, the first film that I can ever remember to really make me cry. But I'm going to do a cheat because my favourite movie of that year is not a movie at all. It's a TV series. It's a decalogue. But the decalogue needs its due. It's the best thing that, that was made that year. It's one of those things that stands the test of time. It's commonly put in with the movies. And I know that annoys people. It probably used to annoy me. But let's celebrate the decalogue for what it is. It's Kieslowski's oh, incredible 10-part piece where he basically takes on very loosely the Ten Commandments and dramatizes them in some way it's incredible 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 1990 was a year that I went to see Dances with Wolves and I love Dances with Wolves I fought viciously for it I remember to get the, it's the first time I ever seen or get hold or took notice of the Oscars and really wanted Dances with Wolves to, to win uh, I met, went, went with three friends of mine to the cinema and they all hated it. Hated it. <laughs> but I loved it. I thought it was great. I was again, talked about in the last part. I really was in a Costner thing at the time. It was uh, was pretty great. Uh, Goodfellas was out that year. The Grifters with John Cusack was out that year. Frank and Hooker was out there. Curacao was Dreams is 1990. But as I'm presumed Innocent was out that year, which I also think is very good. But talking back again to the previous part you'll see some lineage through when I talk about Blood Simple the Coen brothers had Miller's Cross and I that year as well and uh, Gabriel Byrne and uh, Albert Finney are incredible in Miller's Cross and it might be the best Coen brothers movie it's not my favourite but it might be the best again creates stakes there it creates real drama and uh, it's violent, but not always in your face, but under the under the, under the hat or under the hood is violent. I think Miller's Crossing is great. 1991, another Crossing movie with JFK. I've seen that in the cinema. I remember my memories going back of watching JFK are that I was, it was so long and had drunk so much carbonated soda that I really needed to pee, but I was really fearful of missing something in it. Uh, so it was great. Point Breaks out that year. T2s at that year, Silence and Lambs at that year. But again, it's lost out to one of those kind of monuments of world cinema. And that's Brighter Summer Day and Brighter Summer Day by Edward Jang. It's a four hour masterpiece, um, which I could talk about all day. And someday I will have to do a video on Brighter Summer Day. A lot of pe other people better respected than me talk about Brother Summer Day and you should definitely go watch their stuff but it's one of those things I need to get out I just think that film is otherworldly good 1992 funny year for 1992 full of good films like Few Good Men Last of the Mohicans uh, Basic Instinct was out that year <laughs> I remember going want to see Basic Instinct maybe not for the reasons that I want to see Basic Instinct now as a young teen or all this, but find a very good thriller underneath um, and Aladdin was out that year as well with Robin Williams and one of the great animated performances there are but Unforgiven Clint Eastwood's Unforgiven wins out for me it was a return of the western I remember at the time I grew up a little bit in westerns with my father he grew up on a house that had that was very into westerns it was a cowboy and Indians kind of house and the Unforgiven it was like again that dark brooding western that was there and great to watch 93 this is the year that kind of surprised me, I think, when I was looking through the list, because there's lots of great movies. The Fugitive was out that year. Great. Uh, Groundhog Day, one of my favourite comedies of all time. 
is out that year in the line of duty in the name of the father something very close to home for me she never was listed that year in three colours blues out that year and yet I went for a period drama for me Scorsese's best film and that is Age of Innocence Age of Innocence with Dana Day Lewis, Michelle Pfeiffer, Winona Ryder. What can I say? I don't like period films. I keep on saying this, and yet I've seen some great ones in the past while, and none better than Age of Innocence, in my, in my opinion. It's where Scorsese really shines. It's where I really see his direction playing a lot to the fore. The production designs off the charts. It is a brilliant film and one that I, I recommend anybody give a chance to, especially if you would be normally turned off by that kind of cinema. 94. It's another year of great films. Shawshank said that year. A lot of people pick Shawshank. If they don't pick Shawshank, they'll probably pick Forrest Gump. And if they don't pick Forrest Gump, they might pick Dumb and Dumber if they... If they like comedy, but I have went for one that resonates very strongly with me from a, for the cinema experience. I seen Pulp Fiction the first year that that or the first week it came out. Uh, there was a bit of buzz at the time, and I went to the cinema, and the cinema was well, it was sold out. I was lucky to get a ticket. Myself and my friend had to sit a few seats apart from each other, and I'd never seen anything like it. It was smart dialogue, it was snappy in a way that I don't think it's seen beforehand and the way the stories all fit together and the characters fit together I love Pulp Fiction it might not actually be as good a movie as some of the other ones that I've mentioned but again that nostalgia feel pulls it closer for me so 94 is Pulp Fiction 95 another great great year of movies of action movies specifically 7 was out that year 8 Casino uh, Braveheart but I've went for Usual Suspects and again a film was about stakes. A film that had you guessing. Like a who done it, but without the who done it part. Uh, who is who in the movie and where do they fit? And again, the resolution of it all is just is just brilliant. It's a very smart, savvy, and interesting film. Uh, and 96. Well, here's where I'm going to go a bit weird. Because a lot of my favourite films came out in 96. Fargo came out in 96. When I seen Fargo in the list, I went, oh, that's going to win. And I seen Mission Impossible first. I think it's the best Mission Impossible. Primal Fear was out that year. Even one of our family movies, Matilda, was out that year. But it really came down to two. It came down to Jerry Maguire, Cameron Crowe's amazing film that still to this day, for some reason, makes me cry every time that I see it. And not at the Ronnie Zellweger, but at the bit where Cuba Gooding Jr. is describing his relationship with Jerry Maguire. It's, it's stupid it just is one of those things if I've seen this scene in isolation by itself nothing would happen but when you watch the whole film through from start to finish and go on that journey with those characters you can't help but be taken along with it but my favourite film and one of the most important films of that period of my life was Swingers Swingers with John Favreau Vince Vaughn that basically became my bible all of the humour, all of the catchphrases that myself and my friends used were basically swingers. And so money. You could do baby rabbit. All of that kind of stuff. Swingers is an incredibly important film to myself. Uh, alongside one that will be in the next part. But yeah, Swingers deserves a better release than, than it has. And somebody will do it a great service one of these these years. I kind of expect one one films to be the people that kind of do that because it kind of seems to fit with the cooler, etc. But we'll see how it goes. 97 has one of my favourite films of all time in it. It used to be my stock answer for my favourite film of all time if you'd watched my film Journey with Nathan. And that is Ellie Confidential. So 97. Also out that year, films that I loved. Ghost Point Blank. Loved. Princess Mononoke came out that year. Uh, Kyushu Kurosawa's Kure came out that year. Perfect Blue came out that year. Brilliant. Live or Live Flesh came out that year. I'm all the bars. Uh, Hanabi, Fireworks, the other people came out that year. Fifth Element came out that year. But uh, Ellie Confidential came out that year. The basically Realm, Raymond Chandler esque noir ish detective thriller. I suppose um, drama, nothing else, with uh, Guy Pearce and uh, just 
just a really really great cast it's tight that moment of Roach Massey in the in the script it kind of blew my mind when I was watching it again one of those quintessential moments where you're a step ahead of the person that's on screen you knew the implications of that word more so than anything else and how it tied everything together uh, just a wonderful 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 movie and one that I enjoy watching many many times and then 98 finishes it off for this little this little run and um, well pretty good year as it turned out American History X came out that year Rushmore came out uh, Sin Private Ranch Shakespeare in Love came out that year The Truman Show is my runner up uh, for this year because I think Truman Show is very under if I had an underrated movie most underrated movie of all time I'd say The Truman Show I still think Jim Carrey should have won the Oscar that year even though I can't Edward Norton's brilliant. Well, you get the idea. Anyway, about my favorite film, and it's for many people. I suspect their favorite film from that year, from our generation, it was The Big Lebowski. Again, another Coen Brothers movie. My favorite Coen Brothers movie. Um, there's just something about it. That really t ties things together. Sorry. Um, but The Big Lebowski. I mean, haven't watched many Coen Brother movies and watched certain characters be, appearing in many of them like John Turturro and seeing it all come together in what was an easier watching movie than many other ones it wasn't quite as obtuse as Fargo wasn't quite as serious as Miller's Cross and it wasn't quite as artsy or as clever maybe as Blood Simple but here was a story that you could follow that was quite funny that it's odd because you don't really like any of the characters but you like the characters if that makes sense I mean the dude's just not he's not somebody anybody would aspire to be but you couldn't help but root for him come on man he's one of those guys who's smarter than he lets on or he's smarter than he even he knows he is himself and that is my part two of my list of my favourite films of all time Um or favourite films from each year of my life. See, I forgot what the hell I'm making about in terms of a video. Thanks very much for watching. Do you disagree with a lot of my picks? I suspect that you might. I haven't made my list to be contrary. I've tried to be honest with my list to myself. Um, and I hope it gives you a good insight into what makes me tick insofar as films and my films that I, that I enjoy over the course of my life. Thanks very much. I'll speak to you again soon. Take care. Bye.